Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Welcome. This is your host and your friend, Kronde Sony, And our guest for today is Frederick Nindestorm. He's a Swedish psychotherapist who has been working in the field of psychiatry for more than a decade. He came across three principles around a couple of years ago that helped him change his life on a very personal level. And today, we are going to talk about doing the best that we can. So with honor and pleasure, let's welcome Frederick. Hi, Frederick. Welcome. Hi, Karen. Thank you for having me. It's my pleasure. So Frederick, Hello. our topic for today is doing the best that we can. Uh, I have seen people like they do the best that they can, but it's still they make mistakes in their life. They feel guilty. They feel bad for the failure in life. And this concept of doing the best that we can, I want to ask you, what does it actually mean? And how do you define that? Yeah, that's a great question. Well, I, I can tell you, I can only tell, tell you the way I look at it. Um, it was something that, that, uh, that's, that struck me quite early in my understanding of the principles. Mm. I've always, I've always had quite high expectations on myself uh, and wanting to do the best I, I can uh, for myself and for my parents and for my friends and so on. Uh, and when I, when I came across the principles, it was uh, something that became very clear for me that first I saw it in other people I saw it that every, every human being that I meet is always doing the best they can given, given their grade of uh, knowledge in that particular moment, their level of, of consciousness. And what that meant for me was that <clears throat> I could never again be disturbed or angry or upset for another person, I could I could see their uh, their psychological innocence. I knew that I knew deep down down inside of me that they were doing the best they could to their level of consciousness. And, and when I when I felt that to 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 not not get upset with other people, that was really li liber liber liberating for me. Uh, and then it could, then it took some time. <laughs> I think it it took a couple of months until I I really I I realized that it applies to every human being, even uh, even me. And that was for me kind of a, a an even even bigger insight when I I saw that uh, that me too always did the best I could, even when I felt. I could have done a lot better and well I couldn't have because if I could have I would have done so, so I saw it like in in my life and I also saw it in my past life all the things that I've been beating myself up over where I hadn't been good enough where I have hadn't been a good son or a good husband or a good father I so it, it suddenly stood very clear to me that I I had always done the best I could and that was very freeing for me it was like a like a uh, a big weight was lifted off my chest great I, I see that that people they get angry and they feel guilty and they hate people they hate things but when they come to understand that everybody is doing the best that they can, they see the psychological innocence. And this is what helps them change. This is what helps them forgive the other person or themselves. So could you please talk more about uh, forgiveness? Yeah. Well... <sighs> For me, I, I've well, this is just me talking again. I don't know if, if it's 
rings true in you, but but for me, with a higher level of understanding, I don't I don't feel the need to forgive as much. You like back a couple of years ago, I, I was I think I think I was good at forgiving, but nowadays I I. I I have no, I have no need to forgive, because, because I, I don't see myself or other people doing, doing anything wrong. Um, I mean, well, that's my interpretation of the word forgive. To forgive someone, we, we, we must first have, have made up our minds that they have done something wrong. In my mind, we could never do anything wrong. What we could do, we could the the action could be very bad or wrong, but the but the individual is never wrong. I mean, it's it's depending on the individual's understanding in the moment. So, as I see it, at least now, uh, with a higher level of understanding, I don't feel the same need to forgive because because the, there are there are no errors. Did you did you get what I'm, I meant with that? Yeah, yes, I did. But but some people have grudges against some people who yeah. did bad to them in the past. So what yeah. can they do about it? Yeah, yeah, and, and in, in that sense, if if we're talking forgiving in that sense, then I mean, then it's something very good because I mean, like you said, lots of people say stuff like oh i will never forgive him or i will never forgive you for what you've done but that is that is only punishing the one who won't forgive i mean we're holding on to that grudge we're uh, we're we're containing the anger or the or the upset but i mean it, if i'm upset with you if i'm angry with you it doesn't affect you but it, but if it affects me every day but but I, I'm doing it because I want to punish you, but it only punishes me. So in that way, forgiveness is, is very important. Great. And how do you see anger? Why do people get angry? Well, angry, I guess. I mean, we get angry when we when we when we lack when we lack knowledge to the situation that's uh, in front of us. I mean, when I get angry, there's an opportunity for me to learn. There's, there's something I, <laughs> I haven't quite understood yet. Or I'm not, I'm not, uh, I'm not rested. I'm not, in, I'm not the best version of, version of myself. So if I get angry, I try to settle down, just take a step back. I know the answers inside of me. It has nothing to do with the, the person I'm angry at or the situation. It's just my level of understanding in the moment. So when I'm, if I get angry, I mean, just shut up, back down, and uh, try to get in contact with my inner wisdom. You just uh, talked about uh, inner wisdom. Uh, could you talk more about that? Like, what is the wisdom and how does it work? <laughs> wow. You're throwing quite big questions. Um, I've, I've, been, uh, I've been brought up, like, like most people in these days, uh, quite used to using my uh, intellect, my brain. To, to get around in school and in, in life, to understand stuff, fill my brain with stuff and then pick it up, um, pluck it out. Um, the inner wisdom is something else. Uh, for me, inner wisdom is, uh, a sense of uh, certainty of just knowing stuff. The inner wisdom is, is much more a deep, a deep sense of um, feeling of a, a deep sense of truth inside of me, and I can't I can't really explain it. But when 
when I got in contact with my inner wisdom and, and people that I know and people that I work with, when, when they get in contact with their inner wisdom, um, something, something happens to them. And when, when they get in contact and get a glimpse of their inner wisdom, they will never see the world alike again. Their whole world will change. Because I have, like all other people, was brought up thinking that my world was created from the outside in. And when it stood clear for me that that was just an illusion, my, my world is 100% created from the inside out that also changes everything great and what what is guilt and why do people feel that and what is the solution how can people overcome the guilt guilt wow well i mean guilt or shame or all those feelings um yeah for me that's guilt for me has been like we discussed earlier when when i have an expectation that i will uh, perform in a, in a certain way or behave in a certain way and when i when i don't manage to do that i feel guilty uh, like I feel guilty for uh, screaming at my kids or not helping my parents enough or uh, but and I, and I guess if if we if we don't see the psychological innocence, if we don't see that we're doing the best we can, given our level of consciousness in the moment. Uh, then I guess those feelings of guilt will continue to appear. So, so that's that's something that helped me. And feelings of, feelings of guilt are are a direct result of guilty thoughts. So, to some people that can see the the, the way the thoughts affect us that we, we, we don't experience our life, we experience the thoughts of, of our lives. If we see that guilty feelings are re results of guilty thoughts, that could be helpful too, I guess. And what is fear? How can people overcome the fear that they have? Wow, can I must say, you have great questions. <laughs> uh, well, fear. Yeah, it's, a, it's another interesting subject. I've discussed it a lot with my uh, daughter, who's 13 years. Uh, and I've been, fear I've been afraid for, for uh, lots of things as well, as a child and also as an adult. <sighs> but I mean, fear, fear is like, like every other emotion. We're not afraid of the things we're, we think we're afraid of. We're just afraid of the scary thoughts we have. And the scary thoughts produce a feeling in our body. And the more we believe them, the, the worse the feeling gets. And I mean, you can have panic attacks. You can be really, really, really scared of something. And you think it's the spider or, or the fear of the dark or whatever. But it isn't. I mean, you can you can be you can be terrified to go outside when it's dark. But if you close your eyes, then it's pitch black, and, and you're not afraid. And if you go outside in the daytime, you're not afraid. But something happens when it's dark outside, so it's easy to think that it's the the lack of sunlight that makes you afraid. But I mean, it's it's your thoughts. When you go outside and it's dark, other thoughts come up. So when you see, when you see that there's nothing to fear but fear itself, and that fear is a direct result of your uh, thinking, then it gets really exciting. I mean, 
I've been, I've been afraid of the dark until I was quite old. And to go outside, to go outside now in the forest and, and happen in the middle of the night and see what happens in my body and see what thoughts pop up. Wow, I get a, I get a, a scary thought. But to let them come, to let them pass. And I mean, thoughts, thoughts aren't reality. Thoughts are, are just uh, alternatives that our brain throws to us. If, if we don't pay them any attention, they'll leave and something else will come up. I've seen lots of people being afraid of talking to people, strangers, being afraid of being social. They have social anxiety. So they, they try many things. They try techniques, they read books, they take pills, but it's still they get this social anxiety and they think that they are born with that. But uh, what I think is that it's mostly about they are thinking in the moment. So yeah. how can people overcome social anxiety <laughs> well i don't think that i think first of all it would help if they realize that they're not afraid there's no no such thing as a social anxiety i mean that's something that they made up in their heads um but like you say there's a lot of thinking going on there's a lot of thinking and the thinking can be how i am perceived and how will karan how will he um perceive me and what will he be thinking and I mean like you said we're way up in our heads we're up in our heads all the time and if I start thinking what you will think about me now or my how my how I'm talking in my this foreign language I, I wouldn't I wouldn't dare to open my mouth <laughs> but if I, I don't if I don't take those insecure thoughts for reality I mean if, I, if I'm just, just myself then there's nothing to be afraid of. There's no, no such thing as a social phobia, at, at least the way I see it. Like you say, just lots and lots of insecure and scared thoughts. Great. And for people, it's like their past haunting them. And when they go to any situation where they have to talk to people those thoughts come back the past trauma or whatever happened in the past and they feel afraid they have the anxiety and for some people it's like getting even panic attack so it concerns not only anxiety but many things so how can people see beauty in the past and how can they overcome the past trauma <sighs> well i mean the past, it does not exist at all. It's, it's just uh, a trauma is just a collect collection of memories carried through time, thoughts carried through time. Nothing more than that. And with that being said, uh, people shouldn't ignore the past. I mean, I've been through a lot. You've probably been through a lot, but it's no longer true. The past does not exist. I mean, you, Karen, when you woke up this day, you thought you had a personality that was Karen, and I thought I had a personality that was Frederick. But I mean, when I woke up this morning, I had every opportunity to do whatever I, I wanted to. The past is gone. The past is dead. I've been this person up until to this moment. From now on, I'm free to do whatever I want. And like you said, many people get stuck in the past and, and they think that they're broken. And think, they think and they've been told from therapists, from other persons that, oh, what you've been through, you could never heal from this. You're broken. But, but that's, that's just not true. You, you probably listened to uh, Bill Pettit. American psychiatrist and 3P teacher. His, uh, his beautiful series about us being never being broken and having nothing lacking. And that's, that's true. 
there's nothing that can destroy the beauty that's inside every one of us. Great. And that's three principles. They tell us that there's no such thing as mental illness. It's just our thoughts causing us to feel whatever it is that we feel. So what is mental health for you? And uh, how can the people who are suffering from any kind of mental illness, how can they overcome their mental illness? Like I said, great questions. <laughs> well, uh, like I said in the beginning, I'm, I'm a physiotherapist and I've been working with uh, uh, people belonging to, this, to the social psychiatry, as we say in Sweden, I mean, that have uh, chronic mental illness, schizophrenia, borderline, bipolar. Um, and I saw that, I saw that as chronic mental illness. I thought that they, they could never get better. Well, I, that they could get better, but never get rid of their, I mean, it, it's chronic. But when I realized that those people are as healthy as you and me, they're, they're sitting in the middle of mental health, mental health. They, they just don't know it. I mean, they're like, like you mentioned 3P and like Sid Banks said, every person is one thought away from mental well-being if they could just find that thought. So I don't, I don't think they have to do anything to work on their mental illness. If they can find that thought that can make them see that they're, that they're whole, that they're complete. But that, that's the kind of a problem in, in today's psychiatry that we have to do something. There's something we have to do to work on it uh, or take some pills to go talk to someone or do our exercises, breathing exercises. There's a lot of stuff we, we, we think we have to do. But, but I mean, the problem is, is what we're already doing. I mean, they're prisoners in their, in their, man-made inv invisible prisons that they made via their thinking and when they can see that they're in that they innocently have created their own prisons they also see that they hold the key and the word innocence is is important here because they as well are doing the best they can but then, then again, they, you and me, everyone could need some direction, a guy that helps you. But, but I mean, there's nothing magical about you or me or anyone teaching the, the principles. So the answer is inside every one of us. But sometimes you need someone who can guide you there. And it can come from a book, it could come from a podcast, it could come from a person, it could come from anything. Because it's actually coming from inside you. But, uh, yeah, sometimes an outer element is good to, to lead you the way to the answer that lies within us all. Do you get any of that? Yes, I do. It's yeah. like... All the answers are always within us. Yeah. We just, yeah. What is your experience with the three principles and what change did they make in your life? Yeah, wow. Um, yeah, I, I, um, I didn't look for the principles. I didn't look for mental well-being. I was, um, I was doing fine, or at least I, I thought so. <laughs> I didn't feel bad. I wasn't stressed. Well, not more than... Your average guy. Uh, then I was uh, I was taking a course in my physiotherapy course, working with the body, so to speak. 
then I came in contact with a girl who, who had been, um, she's been studying with Michael Neal, the, the Super Coach Academy. We, we began speaking. Um, and then she sent me a couple of books and podcasts and so on. I came in contact with uh, Sydney Banks videos, the Long Beach, Long Beach lectures and Hawaii lectures and so on. And at first I tried, like I said, I, tr I tried using my intellect. I, I tried to understand this thing that she talked about. Okay, tell me what are the principles? How do they work? Come on, tell me. <laughs> and she was, she was very patient with me. Um, some, some, somehow along the way, my, my, my mind, my intellect slowed down so I could so I could hear what was behind all those words. And I, I can't say how it happened. I can't say, say what I heard, but it, it was like a, a switch click. And then I, and then I saw, and, and I, I realized, I realized now that what I saw was just a little, little, little bit. And I, I know, I know now that I know nothing, but, but it really, it really felt empowering and life-changing like i said to to um, to see that i wasn't i wasn't living my life from the outside in that i wasn't thrown out in life's circumstances that i wasn't a, a ball in a pinball machine just bouncing around no that i i somehow that I was creating the experience of my life moment to moment. That was, that was, wow, <laughs> that was, that was something for me. I mean, when you see that, when, when you see that, not in, a, in an intellectual level, when you see it down here, I'm pointing to my heart now, when you feel it, I mean, there's no going back. I, I can't start living my life from the outside in now. Well, I, I could like I said, in, in a moment or if I'm having a bad day or a bad hour, but I always bounce back to, oh, come on. <laughs> you, you fall into that illusion again. You're living outside in. So that, that changed everything. I mean, that changed every meeting with none, any, any other person. It changed like in, in my personal life, in my, in my career as a physiotherapist. And then what we talked about in the beginning, when I saw the psychological innocence in myself and in other people, that that's those two, I mean, small things. Uh, life will never be the same. And for that, I'm, I'm really grateful for not for not. I mean, me who haven't who haven't suffered, who haven't, who haven't, uh, I, who haven't even looked for this. And I think that could be one of the reasons that it came to me quite quickly. I, I didn't really try and I was I wasn't looking. It 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 found me. So yeah, I'm I'm grateful. Great. And when you find yourself constantly thinking negative in that situation, how do you quiet your mind? Hmm yeah that that was something that that also became quite clear for me when i when i started seeing this i mean i'm i was quite positive uh when i when i found this but <laughs> yeah it it was a shift for me i don't know if you if you played video games as a kid but i i played a couple of video games where you they were called first person shooters. You saw the game from within your own eyes and you walked around in worlds and monsters came hurling at you and you had to shoot them down. And when my, when my level of understanding kind of went up just a little, little, little bit and I saw that I was living from the inside out, it was like I was playing one of those, <laughs> one of those games where you can see the, the guy you were playing from from behind with, with a, some sort of a other perspective. I could see myself in situations from, from like from above. 
and I, I could see, I could see, I could see the principles. I could see the principles in my life. At first, I think mostly the principle of thought. I could see it. I could see how my thinking led to my behavior in a way that I couldn't see before. And, and when I saw that, it was just thoughts. It wasn't reality. It wasn't a first-person shooter. Um, yeah, that, that too was really empowering. Do you practice meditation? No, I don't. And now I remember your last question. What I do to calm down. Should I get back to that? Yeah. So nowadays, if I get upset, I mean, I do get upset. Um, yeah, like you said, um, I, I, I usually remove myself from, from the, the person or the situation. I know that there's nothing to find there. Uh, I go to myself, probably laughing a bit. Oh, I've fallen for this trick once again. Uh, and I know, I know I, don't, I don't have to figure anything out. I don't have to think about it. I just have, I just have to let it be. So that's, that's how I, I find, find my... Because uh, there's nothing to find. It's, it's inside me. I haven't lost it. I just got lost in my thoughts for a second. And now to your second question about meditation. No, I don't meditate. Um, I probably, I, perhaps I should. But for me, it's... And this might upset someone. I don't know. But, but meditating for me... If I spend my days... Um, at peace if, if I'm fine I, I'm not stressed, I'm not angry I'm not uh, upset then I am in a meditative state if I'm upset, I'm stressing I'm, I'm having lots of thoughts then I'm, I might feel the need to go and meditate for me meditation is um, if I sit in my office in, in front of a computer for 8 hours a day then I have the need to go out for a walk. I have to go to the gym in the evening. But if I use my body in the day, if I'm, I'm walking in the woods, I'm lifting something, I'm pushing something, I don't have to go to the gym. And for me, meditation is kind of like a gym for the, for the mind or for the soul. So I, I hope that, that I'm, I'm in sort of a meditative state during the day so so that's why i don't meditate i don't think there's anything wrong with it i think it's it could be really good but but lots of people that i, I come in contact with they meditate to feel good or feel or don't feel bad and if you do it for that reason i don't yeah if you want to meditate to just calm down or yeah it, it could be good but but people that oh i need to meditate i'm so stressed then i think you're you're kind of missing the point True. Do you do you meditate? I don't. I've tried, but I don't. For me, it okay. is like a quiet state of mind. People can yeah. meditate while listening to music, while playing yeah. a sport, while doing a gym, or even while just sitting and doing nothing. Yeah. So it's all about quieting the mind. Yeah. 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 Wonderful. Great. Wonderful. Okay. Uh, what is happiness, and how to find it in life? <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, uh, what is happiness? Mm. Yeah, I, I, well, I think that happiness is part of our, our factory default. It's, it's our default setting. We're happy, we're content, we're, we're filled with love. Uh, that's who we are. That's how we are. Um, we're, we're born that way. And the only way, the only thing that takes us away from that, those feelings of happiness and love and contentment is our thinking. So I wouldn't go looking for happiness because <laughs> happiness is, is, all, is always inside of us. Uh, and, and then, I mean, life goes up up and down it does but our, our factory default we will always return to to happiness 
and there's nothing we have to do. I was listening to Bill Pettit in Stockholm this uh, summer, and he had a metaphor about, I think it was uh, concerning this, that we're, we're like a cork, a cork that we're pushing down below water. And when we let go, that's all we have to do. We only, we, all we have to do is let go and the cork will rise to the surface again. It's, it's, it's built, built in. I mean, we have, a, we have, a, we have that um, ability in us, everyone. Wonderful. And relationship. I see that the couple, either the man or the woman, they're doing the best that they can. But what happens is that they start judging each other. Then the fights and the arguments are there. So in a relationship, how can one understand their partner on a very deeper level? And how can they improve their relationship? You only have, you only have good questions. Uh, well, yeah. The most important thing for me in my relationship is that I'm in a good place. That I'm feeling good. That I'm rested. That I, I'm, yeah. That I'm, that I'm good. Because, uh, because if I'm good, I'm at a high level of consciousness. I have, I have good thoughts and good thinking. Then I can see my partner with, a, with a clear view. I can see that she's always doing the best she can. She can. I can see that. If she gets uh, sad, if she gets angry or frustrated, I can see that with, with understanding. And I know that she, as well as me or every other, every other person, will bounce back. But if I, if I go in there and try to um, explain to her or uh, solve her problems or comfort or is there something I can do? Nah, nah. Um, so, so I, try, I, I think that the least egoistic thing we can do is to be quite egoistic, to see that we're, uh, if, I, if, I'm in a, if I'm in a good place, there, there'll, there'll be no arguments, because you have to be two to have an argument. It doesn't, it doesn't <laughs> you can't be alone having an argument. If one is filled with love, if I'm, if I'm pure love, she could never have an argument with me. I mean, I, I, you, can't, you can't argue with love. That, well, that's how I see it. Do you have any, any other ideas that is better than mine? So please share. Oh, well, I'm not good at that. Uh, <laughs> but I'll be, I will be. I think it's just what we focus on. If you focus on the bad part, of the relationship, we attract more of that. But if you focus on the good part and if you feel grateful, we attract more of that. Yeah. Yeah. And you're right, it takes two people to make an argument. It's a two way street. Yeah. Hmm. So, arguments, uh, arguing back with somebody, like retorting them or like responding to the arguments. Is it a good idea or should we just keep quiet? I think you know the answer to this one. Yeah, I mean, when we get upset, when we get angry, we're not, we're not very bright. <laughs> we're not the best version of ourselves. So if you feel upset, if you feel angry, um, I... If it's possible, I, tr I try to be quiet and leave because it'll pass. And then we can come back and say, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm, I don't know what happened. Okay, me too. Let's, let's hug. And I mean, it, it, doesn't, it, doesn't, it, it doesn't matter what the, the other person is doing to us. I mean, this, uh, we're talking now about the three principles, and, but I mean, it's, it's a message that's, that's been around for much, much longer than, than Sydney Banks. I mean... Every religion, I mean, Jesus, Buddha, turning the other cheek. I mean, 
love is always the answer. So I wouldn't, with that being said, I wouldn't talk back. <laughs> Great. Oh, what do you think about comparison and how can people stop comparing themselves to others? Uh, in what sense? Comparison in, in, in a Yeah, like somebody's sense. richer than me, somebody's smarter than me, or he has yeah. more, I have less. And also, one more question along with that, that is, what if somebody is always comparing you with themselves or with the things that they have that you don't have? How can one stop feeling bad about that? Yeah. Mm. Well, oh, well, that's that's not a brilliant question. You've been doing your homework, Karen. Uh, like, like I said, I mean, in, in, uh, especially in these days, I mean, I can comp compare my house with your house now. I couldn't do that for 50 years ago. Uh, well, we weren't born, but we didn't have the technology. But lots of young people and old people are, are comparing. And they bought a new car. They, were, they took a weekend to Italy, whatever. Um, but I mean, as I see it, we have, the, we have the same value as humans. No matter what we do, if I if I um, if I'm the CEO of a big company, of, or if I'm cleaning the toilets of the same big company, or if I'm sleeping on the stairs to the up to the big big company, it doesn't matter. I have the same value as a human being, and I mean, looking at such superficial things as stuff money or, or houses or cars or wives that's i don't judge people that do that but but i mean in the way i see it they they're missing they're missing out the the true riches of life because there's there's no real there's no real joy or love or real value in such things i mean they're, they're it's there's things of the of the um the outer world it doesn't really exist i mean and when you see that yeah it doesn't really matter anymore at all great great uh, one more question that i want to ask you is uh people they strive for name fame but the truth is that not everyone can be a celebrity not everyone can be a billionaire. If everybody is a billionaire, there would be no employee, nobody working as a clerk, as a sweeper. So mm. if not everyone can be a celebrity or a billionaire, this race where people are striving for the name and fame, what's the benefit of that? Overall, we are missing our own happiness along the way. So my question is, how can we stop striving for name and fame and start being happy in the moment, start being content with what we have? The people that, the people that really make it. I mean, there, there are the people that, that do stuff out of um, inspiration. They do it because they love doing it. They, they don't do it because they want to make a lot of money or they want to get famous or they want to get successful. The, the, I mean, the, the ones that make it, they really make it. They, they, they do stuff driven from inside, from their heart. And then it just happens to give them a lot of money or it happens to give them a lot of attention or that. But... Like you said, lots of people strive for celebrity and lots of young people, they want to be a YouTuber or I don't have to go study. I, I'm, I'm going to be a YouTuber and make millions. I'm boxing shit. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, if you're, if you're secure in, in who you are and that you're, you're, you're good enough no matter what you do, that it doesn't, it doesn't matter if, if I'm, I can make a career. It's not, there's nothing wrong with that. 
but I can also be, I mean, I, I'm, I'm working, I'm working part-time. I've been doing that for 30 years. Uh, two days a week, I'm in the forest chopping wood. And those are the best days in the week. <laughs> those are, those are even better days than, than when I'm out lecturing for people or so. I mean, it, we have, we have to learn people and we'll not learn people, but, but get people in contact with their inner wisdom so that they see that it, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what I do or what I don't, because the thing that they, I mean, they're, they're looking for money or for fame because it, they think that that will give them um, happiness and love or that, but it doesn't. I mean, you see some of the richest and some of the most celeb people in the world, they're also the ones that feel the worst. They're into rehab, they're drinking, they're, they're abusing all substances. Those are some dishappy people. So, I mean, there's, there's nothing, nothing to find there. And I mean, uh, deepening our, our understanding of, of how we're creating life from the inside and out is, uh, is one way to get there. And, and hopefully, I mean, uh, there are some projects that, that's, that's going on, the iHeart uh, project and the, um, My Guide Inside, if you've heard of those. Um, they're teaching the principles uh, to kids in school. And that is, uh, that is some, some brilliant work that I, that I hope we, that we will see more of in the future. Great. Okay, our last question, that is, what is love? And what is the meaning of it? I, I, don't, I don't know. I, I don't know. Do you? Do you, have, do you have a good answer to this one? What is I love think... to you? love is just in the moment love is everything love is kindness love is forgiveness love is understanding love is being content it's just love uh, we are always love just in the moment it's just that our thoughts come in the way but mm. every positive state is a state of love yeah wow yeah Thank That's you. beautiful. <laughs> Thank you. What and is I love think, for you? And I mean, I think I know what love is, but it, but it's one of those things that I can't, I can't even begin to put words on, because if I try to put words on love, then it's all lost. I, I can't. I mean, even when, even even when we, that we call love. You and know you and I know how love feels, and love, like you say, in in every form, not just between me and my my wife or me and my kids. I mean, love, like you say, we are love. But but I I can't I can't I can't put words to that. I'm not I'm not that experienced. But what you what you shared was was really beautiful. Wonderful. Before we go, uh, those who would like to follow you or contact with you, where can they find you? Yeah, I'm kind of unfollowable. <laughs> no, uh, they can send me an email. Email if you uh, if you um, you can post my email uh, to this uh, to this recording. Yeah, I don't. I try to stay off Instagram. I have Facebook for for contacts with people, but I, I'm I'm not influencing people. But I'm glad to answer if people want to discuss or talk about something. But I try to stay off the, the media as much as possible. Wonderful. All right, Frederick. Uh, thank you very much for talking to us and giving the answers to such wonderful questions. And hopefully we'll be talking soon. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Thank you, Karen. And thank you for uh, giving me the opportunity. And thank you for all the lovely questions.
It's my pleasure. Good to meet you again. Sure. Bye.